Hey, welcome to this day nine lesson on how to improve mental fitness. And today we'll be talking about thoughts. Now, thoughts are a big part of mental fitness training. You'll come face to face with them as you start to become more aware of your mind. And it's an interesting paradox because we like thoughts. We like being able to imagine and plan and remember things but they also often prevent us from being completely blissed out in the present moment. They'll drag us away into some kind of future scenario where we don't want to be. It's like a, a nightmare when we're in it and we don't even realize that we're the character in a, a story, a daydream where, you know, the airplane, the airline has lost our luggage and we're we're feeling what that's like so that our brain can predict what we would do in that scenario. But it's terrible. We don't want to do that a lot of the time. We would rather be enjoying ourselves. So thoughts. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. What should we do about thoughts? First off, actually, I do want to mention if this is on your mind right now, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I did not get in a fist fight, but I did get bit by a a bug below the eye, so it's a little swollen. Hopefully it'll come down. The swelling will go down over the next couple of days. Now, in Buddhist psychology, there are five main categories of thoughts that will pull you off of your object of meditation that will basically distract you. And traditionally, these are called hindrances, or nivarana is the Pali word. And it's a, it actually means technically veil because they're obscuring the natural luminosity and brightness of the mind when it doesn't have these hindrances in, in it. And the five categories are wanting, or traditionally sensual desire, dislike, or aversion, pushing things away, agitation and worry. So this is like, you know, can't sit still, or just this kind of uh, anxious, anxious type of thought. Sluggishness, which means the mind is dull and it essentially wants to sleep. Now, often this can just mean you're not getting enough sleep. That's uh, fine if you just need to take a nap. But sluggishness is more of this uh, disinterest and lack of energy in the practice, lack of wanting to be with the object of meditation. And then the fifth hindrance is doubt. And this is often self-doubt or doubt about the practice. You know, is this working? Am I doing this right? And you don't have to label every thought, but... It can help to notice, especially your primary category, like what's bringing your mind offline, your meta-awareness offline, what's distracting you. And often people will have a major category, like for me, it's often worries or, or self-doubt. Now, the hindrances aren't bad. They're actually our teachers. They're showing us what we're feeding our attention towards and where our energy is kind of getting sucked away. Well, I do have a story that makes them out to be a little worse than they are, but it's an analogy that helps me helped me think about how to deal with hindrances. So when I was in Sri Lanka in the jungle, there was um, it was pretty pretty tame jungle overall. There was nothing that was gonna really nothing that was too deadly or dangerous. But there were these little leeches that would get stuck on my legs, that would kind of cling to my legs and feet as I was walking through the jungle and I'd get a few of these on me every day and you just kind of pluck them off. But if you're not vigilant, they would get stuck there and you know they would cause a mess, there'd be a lot of bleeding. And even though it was harmless, they, they have this kind of anticoagulant. Anti so you're, you know, you're, you would bleed a lot more and it would be kind of gruesome, gruesome and gross and they would itch. So, uh, I had to monitor for these leeches. I had to be aware of when they would cling on me and then I would just kind of flick them off. And that's kind of what it's like with these with these negative thoughts and that take up so much of our energy. If we're not aware of what's in the mind, we could spend minutes or even hours worrying about things that will never happen. And um, the first step is to recognize and to use our meta-awareness to become aware that there's these little nagging negative thoughts, and we don't flick them off, we actually welcome them. And that's part of the release step, is to welcome, but not 
feed them. Another analogy is that this is kind of like somebody coming up to you at the holiday party and they're kind of a lovable drunk, but you don't want to engage them because then they'll start talking your ear off. And at the same time, you do, you don't want to be you don't ignore them. It, it's a a loved uh, you know family member, uncle or something. And so you kind of you kind of just you kind of welcome them, but then you just let them be there without without engaging. And that's what we want to do with these type of thoughts. It's very natural that the mind would do this. It's what the brain is doing is it's trying to predict and, like I said, like solve these what are called counterfactual scenarios in things that could go wrong or things that potentially need to be planned out or all these major prediction errors as uh, we would call them in the predictive processing framework or hindrances traditionally are essentially survival instincts you know we it's normal to have to want to eat so we can start thinking about food or it's normal to worry about what somebody thinks of us because we need to get along with our family and friends so there's no no need to fight with these but just a need to recognize them and not feed them in the meditation there's the Burmese teacher Saida Utejaniya has a great phrase. He says, what I see, I cannot be. So as soon as you recognize these thoughts, you recognize, oh, these aren't mine. I'm not choosing to be worried about this. It's, it's just what the mind is doing right now. You've taken a step back from it, and that's the first key step. And then we can release that thought by no longer uh, feeding it attention, by no longer engaging in it. And then we relish in this metta feeling, the feeling of loving kindness, of joy, of gratitude. There are different flavors to it, but we, we relish in a positive state of mind. And then we remain with that as long as we can until the next distraction comes along, you know, like probably a few seconds later, it could be a few minutes later if we're, if we're really well trained. But this is the crux of mental fitness is recognizing the negative states of mind and bringing up these positive states of mind. Now, lastly, a lot of mental fitness has to do with our environment that we put ourselves in. It's really hard to train the mind, just like it's hard to, for the physical body to grow strong and healthy and fit if it's in a toxic environment. So it is helpful to notice throughout the day what is creating more of these hindrances in your mind like worry and agitation and wanting things disliking things so there are anything that comes your way is part of the practice you have to treat it that way at the same time if over and over again you find yourself oh every time i talk to that person they start gossiping and that always sticks in my mind so then when i'm meditating or just trying to have a peaceful day i'm always thinking about that gossip. So why don't I spend less time talking to that person or avoid them at that time of day? So that's not going to be in my mind. Or let me not watch this type of show or listen to this type of podcast because those ten those thoughts tend to be very sticky in my mind. Um, that's the kind of, kind of thing you can start to notice for yourself how what you're interacting with and the environment are impacting your mind. And this will really help improve your mental fitness uh, over time. There's been a couple of studies that meditation quality really matters here. It suggested that, especially with the loving kindness, metta and compassion meditation, the um, quality significantly was associated with subjective well-being of people who are practicing. So your daily challenge today is to recognize what is your most common type of distraction or hindrance in the mind? Is it wanting? Is it dislike? Is it uh, worry and agitation? Is it sluggishness or doubt? And please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.